All right, cool. So um, let me kick off with, wow. Um, we've had over 400 applications for the pitching competition, 350 tickets, 120 ecosystem partners, including 50 impact investors, 60 plus speakers on the day today. So as someone on a mission to build the impact economy, for me, this is a phenomenal glimpse into what it might actually look like. Um, I think it's important to celebrate days like today because building things and driving change is hard, especially if you're driving systemic change. So to all of you who have been working hard to get here and who will continue to work hard, it is so amazing to see you here today. Um, because really, impact starts with you. It starts with you in the room today. It starts with the people in the building. And I just can, I can't say it enough. Thank you for being here and thank you for doing the hard work. Today is also a day for me to personally celebrate because today is a little bit over a year um, that I quit my safe, well-paying corporate job and decided to commit to impact 100%. Um, I'm not very good usually at sharing personal stories, but I thought that there isn't a better audience and a better occasion to do it than today. Um, so here it goes. Um, about 12 years ago, I joined the workforce. I was young, ambitious, and determined to do everything right. Um, I got a high-flying city job. I worked hard. I was always top-rated, one of the first to get promoted, always performing. In short, I was the perfect robot. Um, I have this concept that I created a robot version of myself that would always be on, always be functioning, always be ready to work hard, and all of it with a smile on my face. So my career and my salary went up, and my personality and my mental health went the other way. And I turned off most of my feelings and my intuition to, you know, as best as possible, perform and always be there to work hard. Every time I tried to break out of this, I felt like I got negative feedback. Let me give you a couple of examples. So when I had just started, my manager asked me what my goal was. And I said, I wanted a skyscraper with my name on it. I didn't know about the CO2 footprint of the construction industry back then, but I wanted to create something big, like a legacy. And you know what happened? He laughed at me. So I told him my biggest, boldest dream and every time he saw me, he made a joke about it. So robot me never told anyone that story again. Um, a couple of years into the job, I went to a presentation by a different team, and they had some ideas that I thought would work well for our clients. So I decided to pull together a presentation, got, got time with two senior people in the team, and pitched my idea. Um, as you might guess, again, I got laughed out of the room. So robot me decided to never try that one again either. So over the next 10 years or so, I did everything with a smile on my face. I let go of a lot of my ideas and my ideals, and I was always there to perform. But then about four years ago, a series of things started to happen that set me on a journey um, towards impact. The first one was I took a break. I had left my previous job and had negotiated two months before starting a new one. So I'd handed in my laptop and my responsibilities for the old job and not yet collected the new ones. And there was no one asking for anything. There were no deadlines. There wasn't anything that I had to do other than take a break and rest and breathe. So my takeaway from this one is to take strategic breaks and breath because rest is systems change. We require a more thoughtful, a more conscious mindset to bring about the change that we're looking for. And so a great way to get there is to actually take a step back and take a breath. Because even one breath can recalibrate, can stop us from talking and help us to start listening. In fact, why don't we try it right now? Let's all take a deep breath in together and let it go. It feels good, doesn't it? Um, the second thing that happened was that during my sabbatical, I did my yoga teacher training. And I know it's not very commercial, but for me it was a revelation. Because for some weird reason, the 10 perfect strangers on this course decided to, from day one, unconditionally love and support me. Um, there wasn't an, any need for me to perform or to even smile. 
So obviously I cried a lot, <laughs> but I also shared my biggest dreams and fears. And rather than getting laughed at again, they shared theirs. And this was the beginning of what I now call my tribe. So really, the takeaway here is to find your tribe, because inclusion is systems change. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening in the world that we consider normal. But if it seems crazy, that's because it probably is. So I encourage you to basically find the people who see the craziness and who can help you find your voice. Um, even when you're networking today, maybe take a moment to stop trying to figure out what people can do for you and build the relationships. To actually build these relationships and friendships that will carry you onto the next stage of your journey and that will be there for you when the going gets tough. So back to my robot journey. Um, the next thing that happened was that I'm now in this PE job. There is uh, an enormous amount of money flying around, but very little um, purpose or diversity of any kind. So I decided to do something about it. And I took my personal money and I started to impact invest, specifically in diverse founders building businesses that were good for people and planet. And it was my first foray into impact but it was also um, a way to make my money and my experience matter. So for me, I owe an enormous amount of gratitude to entrepreneurs like the ones in the building and the room today who put their reputations and their livelihoods on the line to build things that have the potential to make the world a better place. And equally, that have shown me what the potential is of business and entrepreneurship. The takeaway from this one is to embrace your purpose and impact entrepreneurship, because impact entrepreneurship is systems change. Um, I made a whole bunch of changes to my life, my shopping habits, my traveling habits, but none were as impactful as becoming an impact investor. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter whether you have 10 euros to invest in a crowdfunding campaign or 100K to write a big angel ticket. What matters is that you take action. So let's get these entrepreneurs funded so they can realize their visions for a better world. And um, back to my journey. So the next thing I did um, was basically I'm in this PE job and I'm living my best robot life, but I have also started to, to immerse myself into this impact world. And so it created a contradiction for me that I just couldn't make sense of myself. So I decided to ask for help and I got a coach. And actually, for the first time in my life, I had someone in my life that had my back in a way that made me realize that I wasn't the crazy one. And in fact, she challenged me on my perfect robot uh, performance. And what do you know, slowly but surely, I started to build the confidence to be more myself and speak up for what was right. So the takeaway here is to ask for help and give it, because only by having each other's backs, we can create systems change. If you don't know where to start, I have an amazing coach I can recommend. Um, but we basically need to get over this idea that asking for help is a sign of weakness and rather cultivate it as a strength and as a skill to have, to nurture, to develop. So let's stop um, basically thinking that we can do this alone because none of us can do this alone. Let's find the people on a similar path and let's have each other's backs. Um, the last thing that happened is that my coach challenged me on something that was very unrobot-like, and this was probably the hardest thing for me. She challenged me to develop a practice of kindness towards others, clear, but mainly towards myself. Um, so actually, <laughs> developing this skill or this, um, yeah, the ability to see kindness as a strength rather than a weakness was something very hard and very new for me. But the more confident I got in the practice, the more I started feeling like myself again. And the less I fit into my work environment, so I committed the ultimate act of kindness to myself and quit my job. A takeaway from this, clearly, is to be kind, because kindness <coughs> is systems change. This means being kind to others, but predominantly being kind to yourself. Taking rest when you need it. Asking unapologetically for the things that you need to thrive and succeed. Living your ambition, but also being patient with yourself. So 
I know it well, the need to overachieve, to always push harder, to push through, but please hear me when I say you are enough, right now, right here. So I realized through all of this that it wasn't, oops, sorry, that it wasn't one big thing that changed, but rather it was a series of realizations, fortunate encounters, and small changes. Um, and I think the same is true for driving systems change. So I want to share with you a quote that um, Emmanuel Faber used in one of his talks when he was talking about how many people feel like they can't bring about change as an individual. And the thing he said to this crowd was basically, think about it. There is no traffic jam. You are the traffic jam. There is no system. You are the system. So let's all make these individual steps and let's take these individual ripples and combine them into collective waves. Let's build the impact economy together because impact starts with all of us. Thank you.